A couple of years ago, I dismissed the impact of rest advantage on the Packers. And in 2022, it made a big difference, or at least it seemed to. What is the rest advantage this year for the Packers? You are Locked On Packers, your daily Green Bay Packers podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. You are Locked On Packers, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I'm Peter Bukowski and I cover the Packers for The Leap, a newsletter I would love for you to subscribe to. Follow me on Twitter, Peter underscore Bukowski. Follow the podcast on Twitter, Locked On Packers. Like us on Facebook. Subscribe to the podcast, iTunes, Spotify, Google Podcasts, wherever you find podcasts, you will find Locked On Packers, the number one Packers podcast on the internet and the show for fans who know what happened. They want to know why and how. Thanks to everyone who makes Locked On Packers their first listen every day. We hope you like starting your day with us as much as we like starting our day with you. Today's episode brought to you by our friends at FanDuel. Make every moment more. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That's $150 bucks with any winning $5 bet. FanDuel is the official sportsbook partner of Locked On. FanDuel.com to get started. This idea of rest advantage was something that I had dismissed. Warren Sharp brought it to our attention a couple of years ago, we had him on the show um, last year, in fact, before the season to talk about it because I had to admit, I was just flat out wrong about this. It seemed obvious to me after the 2022 season, the London game, all of the impacts that not taking that London game brought to bear the, the, the compounding effects that it had on these athletes' bodies. I didn't take it seriously enough. And I'm not going to make that mistake again. And I didn't make it last year. And so I am pleased to announce, I'm pleased to tell you, announce, I'm pleased to tell you that the Packers have a positive rest differential this season. In fact, they only played two games this year on a negative rest differential. And the weird thing about that is in week 18, the Bears are playing a week 17 Thursday night game. Why there are still Thursday night games in week 17, it, it, it beggars belief. But that's a real thing. And, and the reason that that's interesting is because what Warren Sharp's analysis found is the rest disadvantage is most impactful at the end of the season. And the two games where the Packers have a rest disadvantage are week 17 against Minnesota and in week 18 against Chicago. Now it's a one day short week rest disadvantage um, against the, the Vikings. But one day is still one day and that one includes travel. You have Chicago in week 18. You hope what happens is that game doesn't matter. That you're locked into seeding for whatever it is. Whether it's the one seed, whether it's the two seed, whether, you know, whatever it is. And that game just doesn't matter. And so you can you can rest and move forward. But it's important to say that those games are when this tends to matter the most. To open the season, they start with a rest advantage. I don't know how much that helps. Like they play... Uh, you know, a Friday against the Eagles and the Colts are going to play on a Sunday. There's a two game or a two day rest advantage. Is that really anything? I don't, I don't think so. Not that early in the season. Everyone is, is still trying to work themselves into shape anyway. <laughs> so if anything, like it, it, it might be a net negative for the Packers in a way, because you're, you're not really in a rhythm yet. And this is going to throw you out of your rhythm. I, 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 you know, we're talking about a marginal difference. Now, the bye week, they don't play a team this year that I could find coming off a bye, their bye. So they don't play a team coming off of their bye. So someone else coming in with a full week of rest. They do play the Bears coming off of their own buy. So the Packers have their buy. They play Chicago. I called this one out on our live reaction show. 
as a potential trap game. And I, I did that not to make excuses, although of course Bears fans wanted to come say that. It was just to point out that the Packers have had in the regular season only some issues coming off of their bye with focus, with intensity. Now, at a certain point, and it may be even this season, we are going to have to differentiate almost like BC and AD, the difference between the Aaron Rodgers, Matt LaFleur Packers, and the Jordan Love, Matt LaFleur Packers. I, I think there is a material difference in culture. There certainly is in age. And so I think a lot of the things that we saw happen in the Aaron Rodgers era, and this is not even a value judgment on either. This is just, those teams were very different by makeup, by age, by a lot of things. Leadership composition, all that stuff. Not even taking into account leadership style and, and the attitude reflects leadership of Rodgers versus Love. Like, look, we can even set that aside. I just think so much is different. This team's composition is so different that I don't want to overlearn lessons that we thought we learned before. But that week comes before the, the 49er game, which you know the Packers are going to have circled. And I, you know, I think the Bears are going to be fine this year because I think by week 11, Caleb will have figured some things out. And I think those receivers are really good. We'll see if Keenan Allen can stay healthy, of course. But we have no idea what Roma Dunze is in the NFL. We have no idea what Caleb Williams is going to be in the NFL. We have no idea what Shane Waldron is going to look like in this offense. Like, there's a lot of question marks there. But at the same time, that's a that's a game where you'd really like to have that rest because you want to make sure you have your mind right. That you spend the week going, we got to prepare for this team right now because it is a game where if you lose a little bit of focus, the Bears are going to want that a lot. That is going to be a litmus test for them. And if you don't treat it that way, they can sneak up on you. The Bears, I think, are talented enough that if you don't take them seriously, they can, they can bite you. And then I mentioned that Seahawks game. So the Packers will have played the Lions on Thursday night in Detroit. They have to go to Seattle. But I think that travel is mitigated somewhat by the mini buy. So you have that mini buy. So then you have the rest advantage, which is somewhat unique for a team going on the road. You normally think of, you know, the, the advantages that you, you get by having a team travel, especially travel a long way. I think that will be somewhat mitigated by the extra days of rest that the Packers are going to get. All that being said, it is May 17th. A lot can happen between now and then. And so this is where we stand right now. Today, it's going to change. This is not written in stone. And so I know some people are going to think that this exercise is foolish, and I get that. I think to hold accountable what we're saying now in three months or five months or six months, that would be foolish because we are working on the information we have currently right now today. And so let's see where we are in three months. Let's see where we are in five, six months. A lot is going to change, and that's okay. What do the markets think of this Packers team? I want to talk about that next on Locked on Packers. Today's episode brought to you by our friends at FanDuel. It's winner take all time in the NBA and NHL. And FanDuel's giving you a shot to bring home a big win of your own. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That's $150 to bet on spreads, money lines, player props, and more. I've got a ton of stuff going with the PGA Championship right now in Valhalla, in Louisville, which you got to pronounce Louisville or the people in Louisville get mad if you say Louisville or really mad if you say something silly like Louisville. You wouldn't do that. I know you, I, I know our, our audience is smarter than that for sure. I got a little Tommy Fleetwood top 10. That's not looking great right now. Sam Burns top 10. That's not looking great right now. Cam Young. Okay. Got something going here. I got some stuff I like, some long shots that I like in that one. 
Go check it out. You can you can live bet the PJ Championship. That's a fun way to do this too. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and make every playoff shot count. Get that bonus bet money. FanDuel, America's number one sports book. We'll get to more on the sports books because they have some things to say about the Packers. Are you watching Fox Sports or ESPN on your TV all day? Have to turn down the volume with all that shouting? Make the switch to Locked On Sports today, a free 24-7 sports streaming channel programmed for you every day to bring you the biggest stories without all the screaming. Locked On Sports today brings you can't-miss analysis, opinions, and news streaming 24-7 on YouTube or the free Amazon Fire TV channels app, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team, every day. So I was trying to go through it. And we talked a little bit about this on our live show, about what the the lines were going to be. And I predicted that there were going to be four games where the Packers were going to be underdogs. The Philly game, which is what happened. Now, I don't think that makes sense because when you look at the market-derived odds, it seems like the markets think the Packers and the Eagles are pretty close in terms of real value. The Eagles play in a somewhat easier division with Washington and New York. The Packers don't have patsies in the North. We'll see about Minnesota. We'll see. So that week one line right now is Packers plus one and a half. I thought LA, they would be underdogs. They are plus one and a half. I thought... San Francisco, they would be underdogs, and they are, plus two and a half. In Detroit, I thought they would be underdogs, plus two and a half. And that's it. Four games. They are also, and this is interesting, in Chicago. That week 11 game, coming off the bye, currently one point underdogs. Now, Again, all of this can and will change. But the reason I find this interesting is because right now, and I made my prediction 12 and 5, and so that would fit. You lose all these games. Now, they're probably going to win one or two of the games that they're not supposed to, and they're going to lose one or two of the games, maybe more of the games that they're not supposed to, and you'll land where you're supposed to land or thereabouts. And... I can't square this, all the underdogs in five games, with a nine and a half over under. That's where the Packers are. So why? Now, they also play some other games where they are short favorites. They're, you know, one point road favorites in Jacksonville. Um, They're only one and a half home favorites with the Lions. Um, they're one point favorites in Seattle. So there's gonna there, there's expected to be a lot of close games here. There's they don't get to play the trashest of trash teams in the league. Now, one thing that our pal Warren Sharp pointed out was in eight of the nine home games, they play either warm weather or dome teams. The only game where that's not true is the home game against the Bears. And that game is going to be on January 5th. It is going to be freezing cold. Now, Chicago, they're used to that. They're going to have been playing outside in December and January too. But there is even a little bit of a difference. Dome teams, like that that track in Indy is fast. You come to Lambeau, even the second week of September, the grass, it's going to be a little different you're not going to have the same footing that you otherwise would. Minnesota, a dome team and a young team. We've seen the Vikings the last couple of years have some issues slipping on that turf. The Packers, they know how to handle it. It's a, it is a somewhat slippery surface for whatever reason. I don't know if it's a little extra water. I don't know if they treat it like a soccer field or what, but that's part of this too. And so I still can't get get out of this place where I'm like, why, why is the number nine and a half? If the same markets that set that number at nine and a half have them favored in 12 of the 17 games, 
Like, even if you're going to hit the over by by just the half point at 10, that's a two-game difference. That seems weird to me. Now, there's a reason that this has moved to 10 and a half other places. And I think, like, this is literally the reason. is because the Packers are favorites in most of these games. And I, I do think the fact that this is such a young team has the betting markets, the general public, the media, whatever, a little hesitant to embrace the quality of this Packers team. The It's only been one year of Jordan Love. The, yes, we know what the offense did last year, but attitude. The, well, we got to see the def- defense do it attitude. Well, that's true. I can't argue that one. You do have to see the defense do it. And they have we haven't seen it. But we've seen the offense be really good. The offense was really good last year. But I think people still are going, mm, I don't know. Now, Bears fans, Vikings fans, Lions fans, that's cope. That's all that is. That is, that is I don't want this guy to be good. And therefore, he can't be good. Or I can't be sold on him being good. Because if I am sold on him being good, then we are so boned. And I hate to break it to the rest of the NFC North and the rest of the NFC, but you 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 might just be boned. This team is here. And there's a reason that they played as well as they did down the stretch last year. They played as well as they did in the postseason. And that's why I can't understand. Like the Eagles were bad at the end of the year. Bad. They got pantsed multiple times in the last like six games, including in the playoffs by a pretty mid Tampa Bay team that the Packers also got pantsed by. Thank you, Joe Barry. The Packers did the pantsing of the Cowboys. And both Philly and Dallas are considered by the betting public to be the better team. Why? Based on what? Can you explain it to me like I'm five? I don't understand it. It doesn't make sense. Even if you account for the public nature of the Cowboys, and the Cowboys line is always too high. That doesn't explain Philly. That doesn't explain Philly getting a phantom point and a half on the road when they're not on the road. When it's a neutral site game, that doesn't make any sense either. This was a Philly team that was in disarray. That a lot of Eagles fans were advocating the coach be fired. New defensive coordinator. Offensive coordinator last year didn't work out. You've got some older guys on on big deals. They try to go out and they, they try to stabilize the secondary. But like if you're counting on... Secondary players who are rookies, you are almost always going to be disappointed. I don't know. I don't know, guys. I don't know if this makes sense. Which is another way of saying I don't think it makes sense. I don't. Now we'll see if if the Packers can prove it in week one. Does it, And week one often gives us Outcomes that make us go, what was that about? Six weeks later, eight weeks later, sometimes one week later. You're just like, oh yeah, that was just like silliness. And especially it's in Brazil. That adds its own level of like, is this a real game? Are we sure? I don't understand the Packers standing in all this, but I do have an explanation for it. And it's just, it's the one year. And I I do think people have a hard time with the Aaron Rodgers part. They think Aaron Rodgers, it is it is very hard for people to change directions on a prior that was so firmly held that Aaron Rodgers was carrying this team. And, you know, for stretches, that was true. But that was not true in 2022. And I think Jordan Love proved that last year that th- those circumstances were not as bad as they were made to look. And that was an Aaron Rodgers thing. So I don't, I don't, 
I don't have a good explanation for what they think because I don't think that. But that is where they are right now. And that means it's an opportunity for you to go make some money. It's still nine and a half with our friends at FanDuel. You got to pay the juice, but I did it. I have it. I have the card. Speaking of week one, it's going to be on Peacock. Did you know that? And it's going to be harder and harder to find these games if you are not directly in market. Why is that happening? We're going to talk about it next on Locked on Packers. Passion, drive, and patience. The formula for winning championships is also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance. Superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more. Whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has you covered. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to make your car the MVP and bring home huge wins. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. eBay guaranteed fit only available to U.S. customers. The streaming wars take the NFL. Locked On has launched the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube, and now it's also available on Amazon Fire TV in the free Fire TV channels app. If you're going to be on Fire TV anyway, you might as well check out Locked On. Locked On Sports Today is here for you 24-7, covering the top sports stories of the day with the local experts of Locked On, plus our national shows covering every league. Find Locked On Sports Today now available on the free Fire TV channels app. So week one is on Peacock. If you're in the normal markets, you won't have any problems, but only if you're in like the Green Bay and Milwaukee markets. If you're in Madison, my understanding is this is going to be on Peacock. If you're in Lacrosse, if you're in Stevens Point, it's going to be on Peacock. You got to have Peacock to watch the game. You already need Amazon Prime to watch Thursday night. Before that and now, you needed NFL Network to watch Thursday night. Gone are the days when you could just watch the Packers on basic over-air TV. Sure, if they were on Monday night, you needed ESPN, but that was easy enough. Every cable package had ESPN. That ESPN was propping up the cable package. Here's the thing. The NFL doesn't care. They don't care if their numbers on Peacock are less than they would be over the air. They don't. And I, I, I'm sorry to break this to a lot of you, but they they really just don't care that much about you individually. As a collective, sure, they care about the audience. But they know the NFL is so potent as a, as a product, it is so popular that these companies are going to pay through the nose for the rights to broadcast the games. I'm sure Netflix and Peacock and, and soon, I'm sure Apple and already Amazon are paying the prettiest of pennies, like the hottest penny you've ever seen for these games. It will not be long before the NFL is likely going to do it week by week. Hey, you want this game? Apple, give us $100 million. Give us $50 million. They're going to do that. Because that's the thing that matters to them, the money. And because they don't think it's going to erode your interest in the product. Because guess what? It's not. It's not. You're going to find a way to watch, even if it means going to a bar, which, let's be honest, in Wisconsin, will not be difficult. God bless that state. I love my home state. Uh, so, you you know, you can go to a friend's, but this is here to stay. So, I know that there's been a lot of, like, rending of garments over this. 
but it's because the NFL cares more about money than the audience because the audience they know is sticky. They know you're going to watch. And I know that you guys are going to watch these games because you're here. You're you're with me every day. You're an everydayer. You're a sicko. And we we love this this silly game where like grown men in tights, colored brightly colored tights throw a ball around. That's the game. And we we love it. We cannot get enough of it. But it has gotten to the point where the league that runs this brightly colored menagerie of 250 pound men, because <laughs> that's what it is. They, they've gone past having to care. Because they know when the games are on, we will watch them. And if they are difficult to find, we will pay the money or a certain part of the core audience will pay the money. And I am I am proud to say that that is our audience. That is you. You will do that. I will do that. I'm lucky enough I get to write it off. It's a business expense for me. But it's 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 not going anywhere. It's not going anywhere. I don't want to say it's not worth complaining about because if you want to complain about it, like feel free, but understand <laughs> this is here to stay. And so you're going to get a call from your from your parents, your grandparents, depending on how old you are, and they're going to go isn't it isn't the Packers game on? And you're going to have to go, "Yeah, it's on Peacock." And they're going to go, "What is that?" And then that's going to be a much longer conversation. So call them now. Get them signed up for Peacock. Make sure they have Amazon Prime. Like if if they're if they're the kind of people that want to watch all these games, you got to get them set up now because you don't want to be there at at 11:58 Lambo time for a noon kickoff trying to trying to explain to them how to reset their Peacock password. You don't want to do that. <laughs> I am I am very grateful that um I don't think this is going to be a problem with my parents. I I I know that's not true for everyone. I know that's not true for everyone. That's all I'm going to say. So, um do the work now and I think you'll be happy later. Um but it comes this the streaming wars has come for all of us. And that's why, I mean, we're on a streaming platform for a reason. Pretty soon, you're probably going to be able to customize an app where, like, you get all of your Locked On podcasts, right? Like, hey, you you're a, you live in Minnesota, you're a Timberwolves fan, go Wolves, whatever. You get Locked On Timberwolves, you get Locked On Packers. Like, it, this is good for the consumer in some ways. It's, it's negative in other ways. And for those of us, and I have a feeling that you're like me, who just eat and and live and breathe this stuff, you're going to find a way to get it. And is the NFL taking advantage of us? Yes. Are we subsidizing this for everyone else? Yes. But if someone's going to do it, I'm glad it's us. All right, back next week, a lot more as we move through the offseason here on Lockdown Packers. Trevor Sykema from Pro Football Focus is going to be with us next week. Um, a lot more interviews coming, um, a lot of fun coming the rest of this off season. Follow me on Twitter, Peter underscore Bukowski. Follow the podcast on Twitter, Locked on Packers. Like us on Facebook. Subscribe to the podcast, iTunes, Spotify, wherever you find podcasts, you'll find Locked on Packers. Go subscribe um, to our YouTube page. Go follow us on Instagram, Locked on Packers. We're always putting out new reels and new clips. Um, TikTok, Locked on Packers. So you can stay Locked on Packers.